So thanks for the introduction, Jay. I'm going to present our work on behalf of all our authors. So we can go to the next slide. Religion is central to the social, political, and economic societies around the world. Next slide, Jay. Yeah. Right from time of August Comte, sociologists have systematically tried to understand the importance of organized religion on society. The previous slide. Religious is an important sociological phenomenon, but it has received little attention in recent development studies, and indeed, very little attention from ICTD community. Religion is often organized in sex. These sects can be associated with specific spiritual leaders and particular kind of doctrines and practices. Next slide. Religious leaders as well as spiritual gurus have traditionally been very influential in India, especially in Hindu religious traditions because of a range of historical factors. This has driven large group of followers around a charismatic leader in the past, and it continues to happen even today. Historically, there has also been a close nexus between ruling elites, politicians, and religious leaders in India. Today, gurus frequently take public positions on political issues, some of which are influential during elections as well. In the contemporary context, the nexus between gurus and the incumbent government has been widely discussed in India, both because of gurus' implicit support for the government and because of the government's support for philanthropic programs run by spiritual groups. Next slide. Technology of the day has been central to the dissemination of religious messages. What may even call what we can even call as outreach practices of religious groups. Past studies on religion and technology have looked at how printing, radio, or television impacted outreach practices. Specific groups in India. It's not just about technologies ways of teaching current policies, but also how it is impacting operations and internal modernization of these organizations. Next slide. Spirituality-based organizations that we studied mostly operate as subgroups within Hinduism, but they support spiritual practices meant to appeal to a wide range of audiences irrespective of an individual's religious affiliation. These groups typically have a charismatic leader, a branding, a set of rituals or practices, a community of adherence and service activity aimed outside of their immediate members. The way these spiritual organizations position themselves is not unlike other religious organizations in the past, most significantly in the colonial period. Religious reform movements like Brahma Samaj and Arya Samaj were both arranged around charismatic leaders, both reached out to their target audiences offering a modern rational alternative to mainstream Hindu orthodoxy. Both offered a comprehensive scientific worldview. Both saw their spread through a large scale use of print technology and the resultant proselytization of influential community figures. Arya Samaj especially heavily emphasized some form of service and philanthropic work for their adherents. To position themselves as an alternative to mainstream religion, spiritual groups must wish an asymmetric campaign since they don't fit and ritual value of traditional religion. As a result, technology of the time has traditionally played a pivotal role in promoting these organizations. One critical change in the past, the leader or the core adherents had to physically reach the people to their evangelizing work. Technology now aids, in, uh, aids this process in important ways. Next slide. We conducted a qualitative study of four Hinduism oriented spirituality-based organizations in India using interviews, on-site observations, and in-depth examination of their online and offline outreach material to understand the ways in which technology impacts and advances their core functions. Ashrams were mostly located outside uh, the city that was in the outskirts, in addition to the traditional Hindu symbols present in their ashram, in one form or other, something that was common was the overwhelming presence of the charismatic master in statues, posters, videos, etc. Next slide. Here is a table sampling some of the spiritual leaders in India. As you see here, 
they have cumulative followers of over 10 million but also they exist across platforms each guru has a different style some have their primary communities on twitter other excel in sermon style outreach through youtube to highlight philanthropy that is instagram for daily sayings or short messages that is twitter for an immersive environment there are apps each one of these gurus had dedicated apps for their organization either designed by their organization or by some of their devotees. Next slide. We examine five core ways in which technology plays a critical role in these spirituality based organizations. We find that all these functions are enabled in different ways by digital technologies. Technology aids not just in gaining organizational value, but also it plays an equally important role in helping these organizations build a public image as a modern innovative organization aligned with broader aspirations of national development and social welfare. Though we have used the pictures of various organizations here to give you a sense of what is happening in these spiritual organizations, the identity of the organizations that we are studying continues to be anonymous. Next slide. First theme is community. We find that technology dramatically changes organizations' ability to connect followers across geographies, both by making material available online and by making connections to fellow adherents in new geographies. Both of these were extremely challenging in the past. Technology can be used as an alternative to the middleman or in religious practices while priest takes confession or gives blessings and conducts rituals. Here we see see one organization in which their adherents, not necessarily from traditional priest families, were qualified to offer virtual blessings. Members share their concern in written, fulfilling the function of community exchange. Next slide. By performing certain kinds of ritual practices, people express their affiliation with the spiritual group. Many of these can now be either virtualized or supported through technology. We find that both the discursive elements such as sermons, prayers, as well as physical elements, including meditation, yoga, were offered by all the organizations that we study. Technology offers convenience, bite-sized version of these which reassures the adherents that they are fulfilling their duties as followers, but also allows this to be done at their convenience. Next slide. In the past, the ability of the gurus to speak passionately to the crowd or to perform miracles offered a critical performative act that drew adherence to them. Now, social media is used by gurus in ways extremely similar to how celebrities use it. Images of gurus doing cool things on a bike here with influencers such as celebrities or engaging in online debates all add to the overall charisma of the guru and in doing so allows them to compete in the attention economy leveraging what the gurus stand for. Different gurus have different messaging style. One who performs long discourse uses YouTube, others who are mostly in interested in one-liners use Twitter breadth of technology that are available to them allows them to pick the platform of their convenience to reach out to people. Next slide. Institutionalized social work in addition to devotional spiritual activities was a defining aspect of all the spirituality based organizations that we studied. Each of them was involved in more than 50 different socio-economic development projects. The groups used crowdfunding for their initiatives and offered e-certificates for their contributors. Also, technology helps them to gain visibility and incorporate these philanthropic activities into their performativity. Next slide. We found that all the spirituality-based organization had extensive internal organization management conducted using apps. This included sophisticated use of calendar apps, use of entry management systems and data collection of visitors to their ashram, efficient tax management system and similar things to improve the organizational efficiency. An important aspect of technology use is that of access to the main charismatic figure. Each of the ashram had its own 
major event in which the main guru could make themselves available to the public. These events required major planning using social media and database tools with volunteers spending up to four to five months of planning every year for those events. So this was an interesting quote from our study. One of the, our teams keeps looking for new technological developments continuously. We have developed an in-house tax filing system for ourselves. All our taxes are filed internationally through the system. This is one of the largest in-house auditing systems. We use technology in such things. If technology can perform all such operational tasks, we can focus just on spiritual development. So this was a quote from a volunteer. Next slide. Our paper makes two significant contributions to the ICTD community. First, we extend ICTD outside of an instrumental economic development perspective through a deep examination of technology in a religious or spiritual setting, a domain that is central to daily social and cultural life in many parts of global South, but it has received very little attention from the scholarly community. Secondly, we draw on literature from religious studies to show that the characteristics of modern spiritual organizations are very similar to Hindu socio-cultural movement that focus on social welfare and national development in the colonial and post-colonial era, not just in terms of their objectives, but also in terms of their outreach and public visibility initiatives. This is what our paper is about. Now we can take questions. Thank you. Thanks, Mina. Uh, yeah. Should we do questions now? I, I guess we've been uh, uh, combining them at the end. So um, do, are there any quick questions? Okay, I mean, I have a quick question. Just, um, I, I did read the paper and I was wondering, you know, you mentioned some design implications uh, for, IC, you know, for ICTD or for development. Uh, could you talk a little bit about that um, in relation to your work? Okay. So mainly it's the theoretical contribution which we are making, that is the traits of these spirituality based organization that we studied was very much similar to the socio-cultural movements of the colonial era. And talking about design implications, the way these spiritual organizations perceive identity or how they talk about social behavior is little different from the mainstream definitions of identity or social behavior. For instance, one of the spiritual organization had its own social media platform called Elements to ensure that there is no much distraction and uh, they are able to focus on their spiritual goals in a much better way. So maybe engaging with these spiritual organization in much deeper way can give such design suggestions to the community. But Joyjit, if you have few suggestions, you can add on. Yeah. Uh, yeah, actually, this is the question we generally dread because the work is more socio-technical in that sense about what they're doing with the uh, affordances rather than how you can design better for them. So I don't, don't have much to say about that, unfortunately. Yeah, I mean, maybe it's not even that you design for them, but just like just at, at a broader level, you know, the way that they use technology, is there some different kind of interaction that you that you think, you know, um, more it's... Uh, you know, different kinds of uh, interactions to be designed for them. Um, oh. I don't want to, you know, press you on that. Uh, I think there's a, another three three questions. Um, Miriam, uh, do you want to ask your question? Yeah, thank you. Great work, Mina. I really, really enjoyed that presentation. I think one of the things I wanted to ask you was, have you seen in all of this use? So we did something similar in Pakistan, and one of the things we kept running up against is that the government heavily tends to censor the social media usage of a lot of these religious organizations so if they're mm -hmm. if they're if they're um, saying things that the government disagrees with their accounts will be shut down um and so i wondered if you experienced anything like that uh with with your work okay so i think in india we are having a different culture now because uh the government which is there at par now is bjp which is basically a hindu nationalist party so because of that reason, these uh, Hindu organizations are getting support from the government during this time. Yeah. Georgie, do you have anything to add? 
Uh, sure. And Varuni, uh, who is uh, also an author, who's actually the religious studies person in the room, she's uh, there as well. Uh, politically, we can say, yes, uh, one of the religious groups was the most tweeted to person. In fact, two were the most uh, tweeted to top three people by Narendra Modi, our prime minister. And you actually see in each of these uh, very prominently, uh, you'll enter the ashram and then there will be pictures of uh, uh, the, the key leader with one one or another of the major political leaders. So actually, they're very close in cahoots with the government. Uh, the one risk that is that, that they have to be careful not to be too close to a government because um, at least at the state level, the, 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 the BJP might not be as dominant and they can get turned over and things like that. So, uh, Okay, we have another question from Matt Ziegler. Matt, yeah. do you want to ask a question? I want to ask, um, have you been able to, to find similar work in other places or have you been able to do like a, a regional comparison yet? I'm asking because this kind of is, it's reminiscent of like the mega church phenomenon yes. in the USA and they also use a lot of social media. Is there like any like differences or particularities or, or like comparison of those? We haven't, but I think Jenna or uh, Melissa, oh, somebody did exactly work on Ghanaian mega churches. I can't remember who it was, uh, but there were some. There's a Sorry, chapter Jenna. in my book about, um, yeah, in my 2012 book, book about mega church, partly about mega churches in, in Ghana. So plug for my. <laughs> yeah. So the work. interesting That's thing true. here is that. Uh, uh, these people have non-trivial numbers of followers. Actually, I think the graph maybe uh, the, Mina showed that several of them whom had more than 10 million. And if you actually show up at their ashrams, you'll see that they could easily move a small election uh, one way or another. So they're extremely, extremely powerful to the point where, uh, in fact, uh, the, when we first said that we are doing this research, uh, several people told us, like, are you crazy? Why do you want to, why do you want to write about these these groups. So, oh, there's, there's, uh, well, David Nemer is showing the book which has, well, invisible users there. All right. Thanks for the questions and thanks for the talk. Uh